Do you ever get the feeling that life's just one great disaster area? <laughs> that some mornings you just shouldn't get up, that everybody and everything's against you? So do I. <laughs> Yes, it'll maybe surprise you to know that I'm not always the chirpy, happy-go-lucky chap I make myself out to be. <laughs> so this is my message to all of you. Keep smiling. <laughs> it's worth remembering what Plato once said, quae ferunt vitia, more sunt. I don't know what it means, but it's worth a <laughs> Of course, as I've said before, I'm lucky to have a very dear wife. I don't think you could get a dearer wife. <laughs> Ephesia. She's a remarkable woman. On Monday, she just made up her mind and went into the hairdresser and had all her hair cut off. <laughs> She come out looking like a new man. <laughs> Mind you, I, I have to admit, she's always had a sort of masculine appearance. I think it's the moustache. <laughs> Indeed, for the first three years of our courtship, I was convinced I was still going out with the boys. <laughs> but. Like me, she has this great ability to see the funny side of things. When I told her, for instance, that old Mr. McCorkendale had died intestate, she remarked it was probably because he hadn't had enough roughage in his diet. <laughs> I have to laugh. It's as much as my life's worth. <laughs> Not that there was much to laugh about last week. The, the church concert wasn't exactly what you describe as the acme of show business. To start with, the grand piano fell off the stage and became an upright. <laughs> then part of the curtain came away during Mrs. McCandlish's solo. I would have come away myself if I'd had the chance. <laughs> Although I was quite glad I stayed when almost immediately a piece of scenery fell and tore off the front part of her dress. <laughs> it was pure irony that it happened while she was singing These Are My Mount. <laughs> Still, we made a clear profit of 96p, which, which has been put to the roof repair fund. That man, means we can buy another slate. <laughs> Then on Sunday, old Mr. Pettigrew had a disaster with his organ. It's an antiquated old thing that should have... Oh, it should have gone in the rubbish heap long, long ago. Not unlike old Mr. Pettigrew. Honestly, the time that's spent between hymns while he fiddles with his feet and changes his combinations. Anyway, old Mrs. Agnew pumps for him. <laughs> And it's generally accepted that there's just nobody that can pump like Mrs. Agnew. <laughs> She's quite the strongest pumper we've, we've ever had in the church. And then, of course, she's been pumping on and off <laughs> for over 60 years. It's obviously something that comes naturally to her. Oh, people come from far and near when Word gets round that Mrs. Agnew is going to pump. <laughs> Believe me, when Mrs. Agnew pumps, you know somebody has pumped. <laughs> However, most unfortunately, last Sunday during Evensong, Mrs. Agnew was pumping away with her usual zeal when quite suddenly her lever broke. <laughs> This came away in her hand, right in the middle of a pump. <laughs> Not that it bothered Mrs. Agnew, but it certainly put the wind up old Mr. Pettigrew. <laughs> so the moral is this. Wherever you be, let your sense of humour prevail. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>